One very surprising thing that keeps so many aspiring children's authors from actually publishing and sharing their book is the fact that they don't know how to arrange the different elements inside their book. Now, I don't mean the formatting of our book. For that, I have an entirely separate video that I'll make sure to share in the description below. What I mean here is everything else that goes inside our book besides the actual story. So things like the credit page, the acknowledgement page, the dedication page, things like that. And so that's what this video is about so that you know exactly where to put what. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. So in this video, I'm going to share with you one, what these extra pages or extra elements are, which ones you should most definitely include and which ones are optional. Two, we'll look at the order of these elements, so where they should go in our children's book. Three, we'll look at really helpful examples for each. And four, we'll look at four things we will want to make sure to remember when preparing these elements for the front and back of our book. So let's jump right in. Now, all the extra things or elements that go into our book that are not part of our actual story actually have a name. Everything that goes before our story is called front matter, and everything that is placed after our story is called back matter. So these are the terms I'll use for these elements throughout this video. There is one important side note here I want to mention before we begin, and that is to remember that I create my videos with the printing at KDP and Ingram Spark in mind. These are the two print-on-demand or pod platforms I recommend to aspiring children's book authors. And the reason this is important to mention here is because we will want to keep in mind that both KDP and Ingram Spark have their first page, which is always a single page, always printed on the right, which is not always the case with other printers. So just like I shared in my formatting video, the first page is always a single page that is on the right in our completed printed book. So when you imagine opening your book, what do you want to see on that first page? Is it a blank page? Then we will have to add a blank page. Is it our title page? Then that's what we would have to add as our first page. Is it the dedication page or a special quote? Then we would add that as our first page. And again, that first page will be a single page that will be located on the right. So let's look at the elements that are usually part of the front matter, keeping that side note in mind. Number one is the title page. One of the first pages we usually see when we open a children's book is the title page. Oftentimes, many aspiring authors confuse the title page with the front page. They are not the same, right? Because the front cover would be on the outside of our book, while the title page is on the inside. What we will want to make sure to include on our title page are the title of our book, the subtitle of our book, if it has one, and the name of the author and the illustrator. Optional elements of our title page besides those three are the series title, if your book is part of a series, a small spot illustration, and the name of our imprint with or without its logo. I personally love including a spot illustration on my title page. Here we can either have our illustrator create a separate one specifically for this page, or we can simply use one that has already been created for one of our other interior pages. So here are two great examples. On the left, we see the cover page, which again is on the outside. And on the right, we have the title page, which is inside the book. Each shows the title, the author, and the illustrator. And we also see small spot illustrations. That's just one of the things that make children's books so special. We can really be playful with this. One thing I would like you to notice here is how the title page mimics the way the book title is portrayed on the cover. Looking at the left and the right images, you'll see that the book title looks exactly the same, meaning the same font has been used and oftentimes it's also the same size. So we will want to make sure to do the same in our children's book as well. Instead of using a new font, simply mimic the way the book title is shown on the front cover. That helps tie all the pages together and just makes our book look more professional. Number two is our credit page. Credit pages can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but the elements we want to make sure to include are our book title, the copyright line along with the symbol, the year of publication, and the name of the copyright holder, 
the name of our imprint and its logo if you have one. Usually you only include that here if you haven't added that to your title page already. The ISBN for each of our different formats. So if we have a paperback version and a hardcover version of our book, we might want to include both. Five, the all rights reserved notice, where we inform the reader that no parts of this book shall be reused or reproduced without written permission. And lastly, we will want to include a means by which we can be reached, which is usually the URL of our website. If you have any questions regarding ISBNs or the imprint, I've added the links to my separate videos on those topics in the description below. Now, when adding these individual elements to our credit page, remember that the order of these elements is completely up to us. As long as you have these elements included, there really is no hard set right or wrong as to whether the ISBNs should be on the top or the bottom, or whether the copyright line is on the top or on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Number three is our dedication page. Here again, we have so many different options how we can showcase our dedication. This can be its very own page or it can be part of our credit page. It can be a one-liner or multiple lines. It can be a dedication just from us, the author, or also include a dedication from our book's illustrator. It can be signed with our full name or just our initials or show no name at all. Again, there's no right or wrong here. It just depends on your own personal preferences. Number four is a quote. Now, adding a quote is a bit less common, but this is a wonderful option if, for example, our book has been inspired by a certain person or a certain topic. And so including a quote that, for example, is from that particular person or is on that particular topic, then that would make it a wonderful and meaningful addition to our book. For example, my super me that I co-authored with Wall Street Journal bestselling author Todd Herman is all about the development of an alter ego, which is something Todd helps world-class athletes create in order to be successful. So he included this quote right here by Cary Grant because it's something that means a lot to him as well as to his business and his books. And so it ties in beautifully with the meaning of the story shared in my super me. And just like with our dedication, our quote can be displayed on its own page or it can be part of another page. So these elements were part of our front matter. These are usually the pages that go before our actual story begins. Now let's take a look at our back matter. Our back matter is placed after our actual story, so it's located toward the end of our book. Number one is special extras for our book. This section is completely optional, but can add so much value to our already beautiful book. I've created a whole separate video just on that, sharing lots of amazing ideas on what we can include here to make our book even more immersive and interactive for our little readers, whether that's through coloring pages, like in this beautiful example right here by my client, Nicole McDonald, games, activities, or maps, like this beautiful book by my reader, Paola, or beautiful crafts like this one right here I created for my client, Mike Michalowicz. So I'll be sure to add the link of that video to the description below because in it, I also share how and where to create these special extras and everything else you'll need to know if you want to create your own. Number two is our About the Author page. Now, sometimes the About the Author section is printed on the back of our cover. If that's what you choose to do, then you no longer need to add a separate About the Author page inside your book. We will want to share about ourselves only once, either on the back cover or inside our book, not both. I personally prefer to add the About the Author page inside my books, and that's because I have a lot more space on an actual page inside my book, and giving it its own page also ensures that my back cover doesn't end up looking too cluttered. Now, if you need help with the writing of your own author bio, I've created a separate video on that as well, so I'll be sure to add the link to the description below. So make sure you watch that one as well because it shows you exactly what to include and what not to include and how to phrase things, including lots of examples. But one thing I wanted to make sure I mention here, because I see this quite often, is not to include your email address on this page, especially if it's an email that does not have your own website domain. So if it's an email ending in gmail.com or yahoo.com, 
definitely do not include that. So really, in general, just don't include emails here. Instead, if you want to give people a means to contact you, include your website. And that's because doing so just looks a lot more professional. And if you don't have a website, then be sure to check out my separate video on how to set one up without having to pay any monthly or annual fees. I'll add that to the description below as well. When it comes to our About the Author page, we again have endless options. We can include a photo of ourselves, we can include a cute illustration from our story, and we can even include a bio of our illustrator. Again, there's no right or wrong here. Number three is a review request. That is something I also share in my book, How to Self-Publish a Children's Book. And that's because this can be really powerful. Because something we will need to remember is that people, unless they are authors themselves, usually don't know how important reviews are to the success of a book and how hard it is to get these reviews. Because if you think about it, how often do we purchase something on sites like Amazon or Etsy, love the product, but then never go back to leave a review, right? And that's because we either forget to do so or we're just not aware how important reviews truly are. So it's our job to let readers know. And second, what we need to remember is that if we don't ask, the answer will always be no. So we will want to make sure to express our needs. And to do so, we could simply write something like this, a word by the author. Your voice truly matters. So if you enjoyed this book, it would mean the world to me if you could take a short minute to leave a heartfelt review on Amazon. Your kind feedback is very appreciated and so very important. Thank you so much for your time. Now here we will want to adhere to one of my ninja tips and that is while we want to write our author bio in third person, we will want to make sure we write this review request in first person. Our author bio is in third person because that's just more professional. That's how traditionally published works share their author bios as well. The review request, on the other hand, is meant to feel a lot more personal. It's a request coming directly from you, the author. It's a heart to heart kind of request. And the best way to do so is if we use our own words and our own voice speaking directly to the reader. Number four is a more works by this author page. If you have more than one book, then I'd encourage you to showcase your other books on a more works by this author page. And that's because it's a wonderful way to advertise what else we have published. We never know what other interests our readers may have. And if they already love one of our books, they might like our other books as well. So this right here is one of my other works pages, sharing a couple of my books. And because I have more than 50 books, the covers I choose to include on this page always depend on the book it is displayed in. Because the more similar those other works are to the book the reader is currently holding, in their hands, the more likely it is that they hopefully are interested in one of my other books as well. But really, how many other books you may or may not have does not matter. If you just have one other book, then still be sure to include that. Here's a wonderful example of how you could showcase just one book where the readers not only see the cover, but also get to peek into the book itself. And if you've been wondering how I created these pictures of my books, be sure to watch my other video on how to create your own beautiful mock-ups. I'll be sure to add the link in the description below. And finally, number five, our acknowledgement page. This again is absolutely optional. I personally don't often include an acknowledgement page in my own books, but I've definitely noticed that my readers and children's book university students love to include this page mainly because it gives them a wonderful opportunity to thank those that had an impact on their lives and perhaps even more recently and more specifically to thank those people that have supported them with the creation of their own children's book. Wonderful examples to include here would be a husband or wife, anyone who may have inspired our story, our teachers or mentors who may have supported us on the way, any professionals we may have consulted during our research of our beautiful story, or anybody else who may have helped us with our book. So if you wish to express your gratitude, an acknowledgement page would be a wonderful way to do so. So these are the main back elements, any special extras, an about the author page, a review request, a more works by this author page, and an acknowledgement page. Again, the order of these back matter elements doesn't really matter. The only thing I would mention here is that if you decide to add a review request, 
I would recommend you do so after the about the author page, not before. And that has more or less a psychological reason because before we make a request, it's always better to give the reader an opportunity to learn a bit more about us, the author. Because by first sharing more about us, we indirectly remind them that we are a real person with a real story which in a way humanizes us, right? And so the likelihood of this reader taking action based on what a stranger asks them to do increases because we no longer feel like a complete stranger to them. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now here are the four things I mentioned in the beginning that we will want to remember and pay attention to when preparing these elements for the front and back of our own children's book. Number one, with the exception of just one or two elements, the placement of these different pages will be up to us authors. There truly is no one single way of arranging these elements. If we were to look at 10 different books, chances are that we'd see 10 different variations. None of them would look identical. So if you're ever in doubt, don't let this stop you. And instead, just remember that we can't really make a mistake here because in the end, the placement is up to us. So what I would recommend you do here is simply look at a number of different children's books, preferably those that are similar to yours in terms of theme and age group. To Decide which of these layouts you like the best and then use that or emulate that in your own book. Don't let uncertainty stop you or freeze you, okay? Simply make a decision as to what you would like best and then move forward with that decision and apply it to your own book. Number two, in my separate video on proper pricing of our children's book, I talk about how royalties are being determined. And so one of the factors that influences that is the number of pages in our book. Essentially, the more pages our book has, the higher the printing costs will be, right? So if that is something you would like to take into consideration, combining some of these elements might be a good way to decrease the final page count. One example I previously gave in terms of combining pages was to add our dedication to our credit page instead of having two separate pages for that. While one single page won't make a huge difference, it might still be something worth considering. Number three. Now, I'm sure you're aware of Amazon's preview feature where when we click on a book cover, we are given the opportunity to take a peek and see a couple of a book's pages as a preview. Generally, Amazon allows potential buyers to preview around 10% of a book. So if we have a 40 page book, people will often see around four pages. Knowing this, we as authors will want to make sure that if a potential buyer can view around four pages, that they don't just see the front map right because that doesn't really show the reader anything of our actual story what that means then is to make sure that we have at least one page of our actual story within those first 10 percent so let's say my book is 40 interior pages long so 10 percent here would be four pages right so if I have a title page a credit page and a dedication page, this will give me one page of my actual story that the reader will be able to view. So one page I would recommend should be the bare minimum the reader should be able to see of our actual story. And so that is also the reason why I recommend putting pages like the about the author page and the acknowledgement page at the end of the book rather than the front. Now, it's important to note here that this isn't really a hard set rule. Having published more than 50 books, that's what I usually see. But again, there are for some reason always exceptions over on Amazon. But if nothing else, this 10% rule is a great guideline so we can be really intentional about what a reader can and cannot see in our preview. And number four is something I already briefly mentioned earlier, and that is not to include emails in your book, whether that's on your credit page, your special extra page, your about the author page, or the review request page, especially if it is a free email from services like Gmail or Yahoo. It just looks very unprofessional. A much better way is to simply include the URL of your website. And so if people want to reach out, they know where to find you. So make sure your website has a way to connect with you. And again, if you don't have a website just yet, I've included a link to one of my videos where I share how to set one up without having to pay any monthly or annual hosting fees. I've linked to it in the description below. 
Knowing about a book's front and back matter is so important. So I really hope that this video helped explain each of these elements. Hopefully one of your main takeaways today is that there is no need to be nervous about the proper setup because again, there's no one way of doing things. If it works for you and your book, then that's the best way for you and your book. If you found this video valuable, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making free videos just like this one. Here's to your very own front and back matter of your beautiful children's book. Bye.